Today at the church calendar, we celebrate Christina Rossetti, poet. As an introit or beginning of our service, I would like to read my favorite poem of hers, Love Came Down at Christmas. Love came down at Christmas. Love, a lovely love divine. Love was born at Christmas. Star and angels gave the sign. Worship we the Godhead, love incarnate love divine. Worship we our Jesus, but wherewith for sacred sign? Love shall be our token, love be yours and love be mine. Love to God and all men, love for plea and gift and sign. An order of service for noonday. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Psalm 84 How dear to me is your dwelling, O Lord of hosts! My soul has a desire and longing for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh rejoice in the living God. The sparrow has found her a house, and the swallow a nest where she may lay her young. By the side of your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are they who dwell in your house. They will always be praising you. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Those who go through the desolate valley will find it a place of springs, for the early rains have covered it with pools of water. They will climb from height to height, and the God of gods will reveal himself in Zion. Lord, God of hosts, hear my prayer. Hearken, O God of Jacob. Behold our defender, O God, and look upon the face of your anointed. For one day in your courts is better than a thousand in my own room, and to stand at the threshold of the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is both sun and shield. He will give grace and glory. No good thing will the Lord withhold from those who walk with integrity. O Lord of hosts, happy are they who put their trust in you. Psalm 126 When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those who dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the watercourses of the Negev. Those who sowed with tears will reap with sounds of joy. Those who go out weeping, carrying the seed, will come again with joy, shouldering their sheaves. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 19 through 23. Jesus said, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. So if your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light is in you is darkness, how great is the darkness? Here ends the reading. Christina Rossetti, among the most important poets of the 19th century, was born in 1830 to a professor and his devout evangelical wife. Her elders, eldest sister, Maria, entered an Anglican convent and her poet-painter brother, Dante, was a leading figure in the pre-Raphaelite movement of the 19th century. She suffered from poor health most of her life, being diagnosed variously with tuberculosis or angina and led to a retiring, somewhat cloistered life. In spite of this, she produced an enormous quantity of verse and was in lively and ongoing conversation with members of Dante's pre-Raphaelite brotherhood. She died of cancer in 
1894. Mid-19th century England, during the Industrial Revolution and the establishment of the British Empire, experienced enormous political and cultural change and social displacement. The old agrarian society was being swept away by the movement to cities and the creation of a new middle class. Many people, even those who had greatly benefited from these changes, were revolted by the ugliness and misery that attended urban slums and abandoned rural, rural, rural areas alike. One response was a nostalgic attempt to recover England's mythic and legendary past. This produced a rather romantic interest in the medieval. Gothic, originally a derogatory term meaning rude or barbaric, became both a term of approval and a style of architecture and decoration that swept the country. The Tractarian or Oxford movement shared these concerns and protested against modernity by seeking a recovery of much of the doctrine and sacramental practice of the medieval church. Tractarian emphasis on the sacramental taught that the ordinary things of nature, water, oil, bread, and wine, were the means of God's grace and indeed God's presence. They also taught that a life of personal holiness dedicated to the service of others is the road to union with Christ. Unlike some of the pre-Raphaelites with whom she was in relationship, Rossetti embraced Christian faith and practice. Over 500 of her poems were devotional. They were related to the liturgy, to the feasts and fasts of the liturgical year, and to biblical dialogues with Christ. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer and let our cry come to you. Let us pray. O oh God, whom heaven cannot hold, you inspired Christina Rossetti to express the mystery of the Incarnation through her poems. Help us to follow her example in giving our hearts to Christ, who is love, and who is alive and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. God of compassion, be close to those who are ill, afraid, or in isolation. In their loneliness, be their consolation. In their anxiety, be their hope. In their darkness, be their light. Through him who suffered along on the cross, but reigns with you in glory, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This is another day, O Lord. We know not what it will bring forth, but make us ready, Lord, for whatever it may be. If we are to stand up, help us to stand bravely. If we are to sit still, help us to sit quietly. If we are to lie low, help us to do it patiently. And if we are to do nothing, let us do it gallantly. Make these words more than words and give us the spirit of Jesus. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.